Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video we're gonna go over the controller part for the NES. So with that said, let's do this. Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video we're gonna go over the controller programming part for the NES. And we're still using the Nerdy Nights uh, material website. We are on our week 5, we already covered multiple sprites over here. And the main focus is our controller ports over here. You can go ahead now and come here under the controller zip and download that part, which is going to contain the all this week's uh, material, con including the controller part, which is the one that we uh, we want. I'm going to go over the code as well. But let's go over over here to the main meat of this. Uh, tutorial which is right over here and as you see it's pretty simple let me zoom in a little bit more and as you see over here it's pretty easy first you're loading this value one and storing to this port and then the value zero and then storing it to the same port as you see over here the controllers are access to memory port uh, 4016 and 4017 hex and first we do is store the value 1 and 0, 0 to the same port. So we do over here. Now this tells the controller to last the current button position. So as soon as we store this value 0, 0, of course, enter 1. It's pretty much telling the NES to give me the, the buttons that the player are pressing right now. And of course, as you see on the code over here, uh, NMI. So once per frame. So ideally you want to do this once per frame. And during that frame over there, we're gonna get the current buttons that the player has to press, at least in this moment over here. So let me go back to the tutorial over here. So you do that. So all the controllers are last are latched. It's the controller that last the current button positions. Meaning tell me the, the current uh, button that has been pressed. As soon as you put the zero zero over here, and then we read the uh, the port forty sixteen over here for player one, as you see on the the comment over here, and forty seventeen for player zero two. And the buttons are sent one at a time. That's why you see this load zero sixteen over here, and it goes through this or uh, order A B select start up down left and right. So it's gonna be. So as you see over here, I do this load, and it's gonna load this value under zero or one. So if bit zero is one, the button is press. If it's zero, then the button is off. So uh, load. The first load is gonna give you a uh, value A. Repeat it again. It's gonna give us uh, our value B. Then again, select and start and up, down, left and right. And the same thing for uh, our port 17. Every time we do this load over here, uh, it's going to give us this uh, values under 0 and 1 in this, in, this order, in this order right over here. And here is, well, the rest of the code is pretty much the instructions, but I said, well, the prerequisites, you know, 6502, but uh, just so you can know, well, well, they go over the code so you can see this part over here, this code over here. But it's gonna go over anyway for you guys. So here's the latch call. So I'll give you the current numbers that we just covered. And here, here the first thing you do is a read A. So we load this port over here. You know this is a player one. So give me the first value, which is A, which we have over here. A. We got player over A over here. And then we're doing an N over here and the value one. So if we so the first uh, value on accumulator, since we do this, should it be either zero or one. This is, this is the actual bit value. So you see the less significant bit, either gonna be zero or one. You can I could do this as well, no big deal. And that's some knows better. So do this end over here, which you know, and does affect the accumulating that uh, the value in the a register, but you could also do a bit. Uh, and you should know this because I told you in prerequisite 6502 programming. So 
So here it is. And then you're going to do a branch. So since we do this end over here, it's going to affect our status flag, which is going to uh, tell us each, whether or not we have a zero or one value. So here it is. So it goes over the instruction over here. And if you press one over here, and since you're looking for the value one, so it should be one over here. So, so meaning that it is uh, not zero. So you go over the code. Otherwise, anything else is zero. So we're done. So nobody plus a button over here. So branch, uh, if it's not press zero, otherwise that instruction does something. And all it does, we're going to cover this. So here is our sprite position for sprite zero. We're clearing the, the carry flag so there's no. Uh, it's going to throw the math off, so that's a good thing. Should do that. And then you're going to add one. So all we're doing is moving this sprite uh, this position right over here. And then we're done with the code over here. And then you're going to load this value. Since you're the next one up after zero over here, it's B. So the code is selling, press B. So over here, same exact code. If it's zero, uh, we're done with the code. Otherwise, go over the, we have pressed the button B. And here is just the instructions. And here, as you see, uh, does the same thing, but instead of adding or subtracting, and good thing it makes it, uh, make sure the, the carrier flag is set. We subtract one. And as you see, that's done with the code. And of course, uh, if you know anything about 6502 uh, programming, care, add, add with carry, subtract with carry. So the carry is, uh, is very important to keep in mind over here. So if you go to, uh, let's just compile code if you haven't. Okay. And let's run task over here on the emulator. So here is our Mario over here. If I press B over here, it's going out. And A, as you see, I kind of look kind of weird going. So here is our Mario part of your head at least uh, running over here. Of course, you can, uh, you can just could do the same thing over here again. To the, uh, so every four, so it's seven. Well, let me just compile the code over here. Compile code. Hopefully I did it right. Uh, which one? So as you see over here, <laughs> well, I didn't put the add over here. So it's a little bit. So as you see, that's how you do. Uh, make our, our character move over here so it can do all the rest of the of the sprites over here but that's how you read the controllers at least for this part over here so let's go over uh the next part of the tutorial which is reading our better controllers all right so the better controls uh input is actually under week seven under this pound game over here, which is right over here, better controller reading. So let me zoom in. Oh, well, you can go ahead and download this pong.cpl1 if you want to see the code. But that's pretty much the code right over here. So let me do And there's a lot of explaining over here. Well, let me try to best to explain it. So here's the code. So here's the same as before. So here's slash the current position over here. And then, how are we doing over here? Slowly our counter of eight because you have eight values. So we have A, B, select up, down, left, right. So there's eight values over here. Then you have our loop over here, our loop label. So we can do our loop. And then it's the same code as before. We're loading the value. So now the first, as the first counter, we're doing it's A. Then we're going to do this logic shift right of our accumulator. Sorry, zero or one. And that's going to go into our carry status flags. And then you're going to do a left shift, arithmetic, uh, left shift, 
level here into this button S1. And that's pretty much a variable that we have right over here. So this is location zero. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So that's uh, uh, location eleven or B. So that's hex B over here. So we can do either so the same thing as saying B, but if you are to add anything or change. So right now it's location B. So that's instead of uh, location, it's better off just use this. Uh, buttons or reserve space that we have over here, RS reserve space one, so one byte, so that's where I have one, location B, if this was two, for example, there will be C, but you know, uh, button S1, this is our variable. So now this either is going to be a zero or a one, so this right now is going to be a zero or one, so I'm going to decrement, go back to the counter, so now it's going to be seven, and do the same thing, so now it's, that was A in the first round, this now is going to be B, same thing, so either 0 or 1, so this should be either 11 or 10. And that's pretty much it. Uh, it goes here, it's a bit more explaining, but ev after everything is done, this button S1 that we have over here, is going to be filled with a value, and this is going to be all these bytes over here, so it's A, B, select up, down, left, and right, so, so instead of just loading Every time, load A, do this, load B, do this, load, select, does this, right? So now we have everything just set into this one uh, variable or byte over here. Then we can just mask this value and then we can do uh, our operation. So as I said before, if B is 1, the button is pressed. So we can just do a mask and this location over here on a bit. And then we can just do our code. Uh, uh, at least uh, in a better reading over here, so you can manage it better. And uh, that's pretty much it, but if you still don't got it, I'm just gonna copy this code over here, and I should try to show you better. So I'm back here under my easy 6502, which is the uh, resources that I use to uh, teach people how to program for 6502s. So I'm gonna recommend the most. Not only has all of the material, but it has a emulator right over here. So let me use that to demonstrate uh, what we got going over here under this code. So the code is the same, I'm just going to do a few changes. The value is the same. So here we don't have actually a port for that. So all I'm doing is putting FE, for how if you click on notes. It's going to give me a random byte. So just a random. Uh, by over here, and since the port uh, 416 is going to give either 0 or 1 if you press or not, in our case, we're just going to mask, so we're going to in in 1 or in uh, do this. I like to do this 1 over here, but yeah, same thing in 1. So, in this case, our code is going to give either 0 or 1. So it's going to represent either we press this button or not. And here's the same thing, but we don't have a button one uh, here. So, that, I mean, I could do just uh, B, as we had before. If I were to uh, have, actually have to do this one more time, so this happened, so this Windows pop up. A little bit of a bug, but it's fine. So, assemble over here. And the code should be running, so let me run over here. So. So you said, so you're getting different values, so it is actually working. But let me put zero over here, so it's easy to locate. See when it runs, so it's right over here. So let's go reset, let's go to our debugger, and let's just go through uh, a quick round over here, so you see how that code actually works if you don't get it. So here's our counter, so you already have a 28 over here. I'm gonna load a random value over here, so B is an uneven value, so it should be a one. So now we're going to shift that into our um, our carry, which is right here on the status flag over here. So that's a 1. And you're going to shift this one into this location 0 over here. So now this is a 0, and this is a 1. So this is a volume uh, A. So we did, in this situation, we did press the A button. So now let's check B. So 7. So this so here's a B9, so we can also press B on this <laughs> emulation over here, so press both buttons at the same time. 
So same thing. So now it's a value tree. So we shift a bit over here. So instead of uh, so first you had uh, one. Then we added this. And one one went to this location as well. So we push this out of the way. So this got shift. So now it's at eleven. That's how we got three over here. Just writing over here because if I write over here, it's gonna reset the, the emulation over here, which I don't want. So now it's six, which is select. Did we press select? Well, we also press well, C. Right. I'm pretty sure I saw C over there. So 29, that should be a one. Okay, so we didn't press select. Maybe I saw things, okay, but we did, but it did press start as well. So we press A, B, and start. It's going to our C carry over here. So now it's a D. 99, so we also press, I know, up. We're so pressing a lot of buttons on this uh, simulation over here. So C. So I guess C is even, so that's a zero. So that makes her carry into a zero over here. It's going to shift all this value. Uh, oh, it already did, so it's already 36 over here. So, for D, and I think that was... Oh, there's one more, so now they press to zero. So, that's how it actually works. And you can see over here, so that's how it does it. And here's the, does the same thing for a button for player two over here. And that's how pretty much you do it. So, after... It, that's all setting done. We have all the values stored into this variable, so just locations right over here. So then you can go over to the code and like, okay, let me read controller one, see what it does or not. So it's a better way to actually see. And uh, that's pretty much it. So let me just zoom this out over here. And if you guys like all these videos I've been doing so far, please feel free to subscribe. In the next video, I'm gonna go over the backgrounds. So how to do the tiles and other stuff. Uh, I'm probably going to begin just to show you guys how to actually just draw the backgrounds or these tiles. So let's see, so the backgrounds are made of tiles, all of the sprites as well. I decided to skip that part from the sprites video uh, because it's easier to just demonstrate under this background part over here. But that's going to be on the next video. And uh, thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys. Thank you.